in modern world of psychology, there is a great propensity of reinforcing trauma by working with it. A great propensity. And we yet to see the result, or results rather, of a lot of approaches. You see? Whereas people who have, or have been given to practices which are based on initiations and direct access to bliss, direct access to this expanded states of awareness. Traumas release themselves as a byproduct. We don't even work on them. It's a byproduct. Byproduct. You are aiming at something else, and that's what's happening. You see? My question is, I would like to know how to proceed with my practice. So the question is how to proceed with your practice. Yeah, do you have any suggestions about um, When I came here, I thought, I had, I think, I know now I had a misconception of how this was going to work. And I thought we, we just it would express our Kriyas and fully is, and, um, and then they would reveal eventually that we become so maxed out or, you know, accentuated that they would reveal what was actually underneath them and that this would happen automatically. And then, um, you know, would be uh, relieved of traumas, maybe would see traumas and things that have happened to us. But I thought that would all do that through the Kriya. Anyways, uh, so when I have the, I've had these Kriyas for a long time, and um, they, I often thought they are so repetitive. You know, they don't, they're not, I don't know why they're there, and they're not going anywhere. They're not, they're just going to continue. And, um, and so, and they're interfering. I can't be around other people in meditation. People will sit silently because they think there's something wrong with me. But then you said the heart meditation, so I did the heart meditation yesterday. And, and then it did feel like it opened something emotionally for me, which is unusual. And um, anyway, so that's my question. I feel like I'm, I'm getting nowhere fast. And so I thought maybe you could help me. Okay, Could you say it again, please? Yeah. I, I feel like I'm getting nowhere fast. Nowhere fast. Yeah. Mm. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand that's the way of the language, right? Not a matter of speech. Yeah, because none of us are getting anywhere. So let's just first bring that as a reminder. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. This is very, very important. So it's not, it's, um, it, uh, even if it's a path and journey, it's a pathless path. It's spoken of as such. We are not moving from here to there. So the process itself, yes, there is a process. So, um, of course, from just one immersion like this, and uh, more emphatic, other more impromptu, improvised discourses, and if there is not enough preparation, You know, funny enough, this book, are you getting a copy of the book? It will help you tremendously. It will open up another dimension on the whole thing. It will open up, and I welcome you and everyone to read this book uh, once, just to read it through, and then you can have it and open it at any time, anywhere. Because to begin with, it's not a written book. It's a collection of discourses transcribed and then reworked and assembled in non-linear, in non-sequential manner. And yet, there is a structure. You could look at that at the glossary. And yet, there is this attempt to convey something without trying to put all the dots on I. So, what's important is that you haven't been maybe fully exposed to some of the discourses, but 
recently there was this again wave of me feeling as bringing this as a reminder and we did that in germany we did that in poland where i spoke to distinction between western seeking and all these terms that have been fully adopted from orient and translated self-realization enlightenment emancipation um, self-actualization what other terms that are known like god realization uh, liberation thank you exactly liberation all these terms you see and what i felt like bringing a reminder that although these lofty concepts are at the very root at the very base of oriental civilization which has in turn its base in Vedic civilization. Have you ever heard of the um, writer from Japan? Well, no, he's actually known not as a writer, but it's Kakuza Kakura, The Book of Tea. I highly, highly recommend. It's even slimmer than this book. Uh, it's, called, it's called The Book of Tea, written by a brilliant scholar. A Japanese man over a hundred years ago who has studied English with a great professor from England in Japan at the turn of the century and he became known for assembling one of the strongest most refined collections of oriental art in Boston Museum of Arts he uh, if you go to Boston, or any of you, if you happen to be in Boston, Boston is, enjoys one of the strongest collection of Oriental art, particularly with an emphasis on astonishing collection of Chinese art. Because what Kakuza Kakura did, he would go to uh, Manjuria, and just as Chinese began to bash and crush and destroy everything, just as the Russians did when they would blow up their churches and everything, you know, make furniture out of the priceless icons, right? From the 15, 14 Byzantine icons were used by the zealous, right? Early communists to cut from the bourgeois past. They will make tables, you know, like it's a kind of like a, a, a extremes in societal reformations. So the Chinese were cutting with their past, just as the Japanese tried to do that before when they were trying to get westernized and thankfully that period didn't last for too long it accompanied by immediate revaluation of, of the value of the culture which carried so much and to dismiss it all and to destroy it all it's simply uh, an act of i don't know <laughs> it's insane so anyway kakuza kakura wrote this book the book of tea where he spoke to many many interesting uh, topics but there is one line that caught my attention and I read this book many many years ago as many as going back to the 90s uh, because one Spanish artist with whom a man who helped me greatly in Poland in my career when I was only in my early 20s uh, the art journalist he said your art reminds me very much Anthony Tapias it's very different in the way it is, but it's not the art that's important for you, but the metaphysical dimension. And for co of course, that, that all was to me like, what, what is he talking about? So I looked, of course, who was Anthony Tapias, and I read an interview with him. And in the interview, he said, uh, the most important book that completely changed the direction of my thought and everything, my inquiry, you know, my attitude towards art was Kakura Kakuza's uh, The Book of Tea. So, of course, the seed was sown. So when I was able to lay my hands on that little book, and when I read it, it completely, you know, like, was like opening into another dimension. But there is this one line in the book that everything in Japan that is of value came from India. You see? 
And everything that is in India of values came from Vedic civilization. So simple. So therefore, all Orient, and this is what Kakuza or Kakura said, the whole entire Orient has been influenced by Indian thought. We spoke about Ramayana. Ramayana is just as much recited and known in Indonesia. Far away. So, the concept of enlightenment in the West has gained a very peculiar flavor and emphasis, particularly, and it's great possibility, because of the crisis within its own spiritual and primarily religious inheritance, because it ran into the difficulty with that transition, that transition, because there was this distinctive cut with um, a religious past among the, let's say, more educated. You know, I'm not talking about simple folk. We're not talking about people who uh, in Italy go to church. We're not talking about people who on Sundays go to church in Poland, in Italy, in Ireland. That, that doesn't mean that they are truly living the teachings of Christ. They might try to adhere, but among the intellectuals, among the educated, among the, let's say, those who wanted to find out what this is all about, that whole thing was ended very long time ago. You know, you have a custodian who tells you you have a connection to God through the church, and you can't have connection to God straight, that's already a blasphemy. You know that in the Council of Nicaea, the church was installed by God. And that was the purpose of Christ. The body of Christ is the church. Do you know that? You don't know that concept. Church is considered to be the body of Christ. The whole point of the Eucharist is that when you go to church, you enter the body of Christ. How many here in the audience know this? Have come across this and understand this? Yes. So this is an important thing. But people who were already exposed to the aforementioned Bhagavad Gita in Russia, in Germany, in England, in America, in the United States, in particular, they wouldn't anymore, they, that was not enough. So there is this air of existentialism and suddenly we break into the um, in-between phase. And it is also widespread popularity of psychotherapy, psychology, Carl Jung comes, and prior to that, Sigmund Freud, right? Um, some actually, um, scholars believe that the rise of psychotherapy could be traced all the way to Fyodor Dostoevsky. Not that there's nothing, anything of the kind, but in Dostoevsky's writing, there is an element that did not exist in literature prior to that. If you read uh, Crime and Punishment, it's a completely and utterly, it gave birth to the existentialism as a movement, grand movement, and also it kick-started this, what would inspire people like Sigmund Freud come up with the full theories applicable on practice. So, the transition from the religious centuries now entered the phase of this psychological burden of being human. See? And then comes the counterculture. Then this massive, massive um, inflow of Eastern teachings that have been already uh, coming to the West, let's say from the likes of um, well, the disciple of Ramakrishna, right, who came to speak at the Congress of Religions, a simple man, Swami Vivekananda. This is before famous Yogananda Paramahamsa. This historical speech he gave, like 
people came and argued at the supremacy of every religion. The, you know, everyone was arguing the who is you know whose god is more superior, whose power, whose religious, what have you, you know, expositions that come through the respective prophets and through their respective um, books, holy books. And suddenly he comes and just speaks from the place of union, from the place of unity. So of course, this is like, it's a massive impact. In America, it caused a tremendous interest towards Indian way of thought, philosophy. Then come, then, then it's more often they come, you know? Then Yoga Swami, uh, yes, yeah, Swami, he was Swami. Swami Yogana, Paramahamsa Yogananda. He comes there, right? He become very impactful. Have you watched the film Awake? Awake. It's the film called A Documentary on the Life of Paramahamsa Yogananda. How many people watched here? Yeah. It's quite an, quite an interesting attempt. I watched it actually as a, it's what, it was premiered in Berkeley. It was a great experience. Loved it. So it was a life of... So all these concepts, of course, of enlightenment, self-realization. But what it boils down to is that in the West, still a very strong idea that it's somehow becomes a property of an individual. That it's somehow individual by virtue of entering the path becomes someone else. And with a variety of different approaches, the spiritual practices are performed for that end. So I wanted to bring a reminder that actually pan-Indian thought, really like Indian subcontinent, the most important concept there is Sanatana Dharma, <coughs> of which we spoke, right? Just today again, Sanatana Dharma, upholding the field of action. Dharma is the most important concept in Orient. Dharma. Dharma. You know that term? So according to that, spiritual practice is performed as for the benefit of everything, for the benefit of creation. Not just benefit of family, tribe, nation. Creation. <coughs> creation, you see? So I want you to simply reflect on this because it's very important. <coughs> it's not, you know, like you're not um, at that, let's say, age that you are, it's important that there's nothing that really is of second of, of, of second best, of second value. You can't afford that in, this, in that sense. You see? So this, maybe revisiting this, understanding, reevaluating what this is all about, will bring tremendous opening into your own let's say, process and where you are in your relationship with what? Now you could say with, the, with your divine self. Your relationship with that infinite aspect of yourself. Because you are expression of this value. You are expression of this cosmic value which expresses itself also at this individual at this individual point. And this individual point is transient. You and I are going to die as this body. It's very, very straightforward. One, one thing is certain. Everything else is speculation. But that what now interacts, what understands these words, what asking these questions, what comprehends it all, what has this, what cannot even be described fully in words, is eternal, immortal, infinite. It is not subject to coming and going. That's what I mean, we are not going anywhere. 
We are not progressing. You are not going anywhere beyond to what you are. You cannot. And you do not need to. Because you never left the place. You never departed. You see? This is the time to contemplate on this. No, I understand what you're saying. Uh, but I have a very, I've had this idea for so long about, um, you know, I know that it's kind of like sculpture. We, we, we're on breaking away the outside to find out what's really there. I know it's, we're really already there. I mean, but it's covered over with all the, um, you know, conditioning and uh, trauma and, and so I've I've been kind of oriented in that direction of being free psychologically of of the um, of obscurations to knowing my true self, my who I basically am already. I know, but because it's obscured with all this conditioning and and trauma, Tra that's where I'm trauma. oriented. Trauma. What? what did you say? Trauma. Yeah, that's where I've been oriented. Is trying to heal psychologically and emotionally because that's it seems that's what's in the way and wrong ideas you know you seem to um, correct wrong ideas but um to me it has to it's more of a emotional psychological uh problem i have lots of good ideas about it you know but it doesn't help me. I'm, the ideas about that you expressed about that we're just we're really part of the whole, and maybe we shouldn't be just thinking of ourselves. We should think of the whole. Well, that's a great idea, but it's not. It doesn't work for me because it's just an idea. Yes, of course, not just for you. For the majority of people, it doesn't work. Otherwise. Otherwise, it would have been like there would be, there'd be none of this. There would be none of this, very clearly. You know, things are also fairly simple as well. They may feel complicated. You have to decide for yourself how you approach all these traumas, how you want to heal yourself. You have to decide. You see that in order to truly heal something, you need to go to the root of it all, to the root cause, isn't it? Otherwise, only symptoms are addressed. At least this is, should be clear. <clears throat> so, in this work, we go to the root cause of it all. Literally, we go to the causal state of affairs. No, there's no such thing as how. The root cause is in, always in consciousness. It's in consciousness. You see? No, it's in consciousness, the root cause of everything, absolutely everything. Because once you start truly looking for the cause, you would go into a sattva, 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 and sattva, and sattva, domain and realm. First it will be like, well, I was mishandled, abused, had these impressions that impacted me when I was a child, you know, my parents, maybe my whatever, this, that, environment, you know, encounters. But you can't just stop there. You can't just find culprit in concrete people. Something else you need to dig deeper. Why did it affect your consciousness in such a way? that make you feel the way you feel. Why your parents acted, or I'm not insinuating that that's the case, 
But very often in our day and age, it's like starts with parents, starts with, you know, so and so. Where is that? Where is that person was coming from? Why these people mistreated me? You see? So you would have to look into this, not just the event itself. This is the limitation of the approaches of the Western psychology, which most of the awakened therapists in the field have realized and had to modify their work, like in, particularly in the field of transpersonal psychology. In California, many of these people have undergone firsthand because they had teachers, spiritual teachers, were given proper initiation and spiritual practices. So they undergone the process. And though their calling was to work as therapists, right? They realized that a different methodology is required. You need to work from the level of consciousness. So that's all I'm saying. There's this physical reality, there's a subtle reality, and there's causal reality. All that is traced to consciousness. At least if we apply this understanding of which we spoke, the cause of it all in consciousness. So when we have that understanding, you see, then a tremendous amount of energy is freed, released. Up until we're holding someone accountable or some situation accountable, we're working only at that level which we spoke of as that individual and that you know what it's known as inferior inferior middle and superior sooner or later that inferior level will no longer suffice you see it will no longer suffice we are working with it right now if you listen to me attentively you want to walk away from this room with something in your hand or in your pocket. You see? Even the way you constructed the question. But if you are attentive enough, then all I'm asking is to relax. Because if this is all caused in consciousness, the substratum of consciousness is Satchitananda, being consciousness bliss. It is because we don't experience enough bliss that we start to experience inadequacy. And then we start looking for traumas. There's a new wave, new wave in neuroscience, which is reevaluating the whole concept of trauma. I'm not saying that this is black and white and we should discard people who factually went through abusive situations and for them it's a painful process of recovery. No, no, no. Let's not even uh, go there because that would be a tremendous disservice. But you know that also, we know today that people who have been told that they have been abused, when in fact they were not abused, they begin to display all the symptomatology of acting as if being abused. Do you know that? Have you heard about it? Have any of you heard this in the field of psychology when you've heard that? Okay, yeah, it's very important sort of that when, for example, you grow up and then suddenly your auntie, your uncle, your whatever, oh, my darling, I didn't want to tell you that. Nobody want to tell you that. I never wanted to tell you that. But guess what? Mm, yeah, you've been played with. Sorry, darling. Should have flirted. And you were all like fine. And then suddenly the dark cloud descends and your happiness is gone. And then you want to find out who abused you, how, what circumstances. And apparently that auntie was already having some kind of mania. I'm just giving this as an example. It didn't happen. Be very attentive. Very, very attentive. Because when we had this interaction with Miriam, what is real, what is unreal? See? What your own consciousness you give to. What do you want to be real? That will become real. 
in modern world of psychology, there is a great propensity of reinforcing trauma by working with it. A great propensity. And we yet to see the result, or results rather, of a lot of approaches. You see? Whereas people who have, or have been given to practices which are based on initiations and direct access to bliss, direct access to this expanded states of awareness. Traumas release themselves as a byproduct. We don't even work on them. It's a byproduct. Byproduct. You are aiming at something else, and that's what's happening. You see? So, it's your first time in this program. I don't know how familiar with you are with this work, how long you've been following, what was the decisive moment for you to come, what teachers you sat with, what practices you have done. I, no, I know none of that. But what you brought out into the open, I feel like relating this to you so that you do not waste your time. You see? So that you do not waste your time. Now, how should I proceed? How you should proceed? Just be like you are right now. Just open, fully present. Okay? And tomorrow, it's for everyone. Tomorrow we will speak how, what to take home, how to. This is always in the, on the last day. We speak on and to how to integrate immersion experiences. Encouragement to set up your own practice for those of you who don't. Like the interaction Astrut and I had yesterday. Remember? Were you present? Astrid, yesterday we had interaction, how it was beautiful to hear how for 20 years trying to establish spiritual practice somehow and it always one way or another and suddenly it's boom, a meditation room and the joy that comes from just going there. Just going there, isn't it? Like I used to enter the room to meditate, the meditation room, and that Japanese futon stuffed with seaweed, you know, covered in this lovely, dense cotton fabric. Oh my God, it's like everything vibrates, vibrant. People used to come to where I did spiritual practice and they say, where is it from? Oh, like habitat, it's like a bit higher than Ikea. Habitat is a... Terence Conron started the show. Who, who knows Habitat? Yeah, in France, Habitat. Habitat is a shop. Furniture, like fabrics, this, that. You know. It's uh, like a, what do you call it, style shop. Why is it you have, like, I have the same thing, but it, it looks boring. In, in your place, everything has this presence. Everything has this presence. Everything is sort of like, it, it, because it's not, you know, the same cup, yes, from Habitat, you know. They didn't send me special one. There wasn't, there wasn't. Everything, every inanimate matter even, these vibrations end. See? So those, like, of you who have found resonance with this work would be encouraged to set their own practice, set up their own practice. I've had my own practice for a long time. Yeah, I know. I know you're going to, I knew it's coming. This is why I was like, I shouldn't say that. So this is why I'm trying to tell you and speak to you at the different level. But you're stuck already and you want to have something. How do I proceed? You can't proceed. You listen attentively. You can't move closer to an iota to who you are. No further away from yourself than you are. No, no, don't say anything. Well, no, don't say anything because already you want to say something. Yeah, you are all of it, I'm all of it, I'm all of it, I love it. You see how it's all like just begin, begin just chit-chat. No, 
and all of the conditioning and everything. It... Yes, exactly. Yes, I'm all the conditioning, I'm all this. It's not the point. How do I proceed? And I already told you, you don't proceed. Do you, do you hear me? You can't proceed. You cannot proceed if you try. You can ignite a motorcycle if you are a real biker. Are you a biker? No, exactly. You're going to have a you know, motorbike will respond. And you proceed then. But you cannot do that, darling. You can't do nothing. You can't do anything to come closer to who you are. Then why are we doing all these practices? Exactly. Why? You tell me. Do you have bliss? I don't know. It's not working. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. First, first, you need to hear. It begins from hearing. And what unifies all jaded seekers is one sign. You know, it's nothing to do with age. It's not age. You see, I have, like, I was born in Central Asia, and we give up spot in trans public transport, and there's a special way to address senior people. You know, and you remind me even a little bit physically my mother, the same kind of frame. You know, and my mother was. She was by herself advanced on the path. See? Quite, quite to a degree. So, until, until there was the shift in dynamics. She was the one who was after me to meditate when I was still in my 20s. She first came to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and became a meditator and healed herself from cancer without any chemotherapy or radiotherapy. He refused it. She had to sign disclaimer because she read, she read Sat Prem, slim little book in Russian language, the disciple of Sri Aurobindo Ghosh. Frenchman, and it impacted her so strongly that she decided that that's what she wants. And then TM was brought to, to, to town, and within that first month when it arrived to Uzbekistan, she signed in, and she never stopped. You see, like my mother lived through Second World War, evacuation, you know? She told me stories when I insisted. They lived for months on end on what they would find forage in the forest. What's this called? That uh, the, um, that the grass that make you uh, like it's medicinal as well. Hmm? Nettle. Net, yeah, nettle, nettle. Her mother, my grandma, would make them nettle soup all the time. Nettle soup, nettle soup, nettle soup. She went through so much trauma in her life. She never spoke about trauma, ever. See? Because there was no language for trauma. There was no language for trauma. But every word that she read that reminded her of her true nature, she devoured with good hunger. See? So, unless you do that reevaluation within, I've been on a path, I've been for a long time. Okay, let's then work at the mature level. Let's then work at the level of consciousness. That's what I'm suggesting to you. Because in every tradition, once you work on something for a long time, this is the, there comes the time of, for advanced practices, advanced approaches. And that is when you work with higher upayas. 
And in high upayas, there's, there's none of such thing, such as how do I progress? What is what's it? How do I proceed? So, just reflect on this. Reflect on this, okay? So, this is your essence, it's your nature. It's not going to be taken away from you. And it's not like you run out of time. It's not like you, you have to hurry up. It can come to you as that with a very soft, tender way, without announcing itself. And suddenly this what feels like covering and everything recedes, falls away. <clears throat> 